I work here in the Cold War Firehouse, and uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, uh, our firehouse here in Caldwell. Um, since we're staying close to home and uh, we're not doing a lot of uh, firehouse tours, what we'd like to do this year during Fire Prevention Week is to remind you of uh, fire prevention tips and safety tips and maybe take you on a quick tour of the firehouse and show you some of our equipment. So come on in. This is our firehouse and um, this is where we spend most of our time. We keep all our equipment here. The truck is out right now uh, on a fire call, but uh, when they get back, maybe we'll uh, get them to jump in on the video. You can see in the back here we have uh, fire gear being stored. Um, and um, we also have uh, other rooms in the firehouse that uh, we'll take you on a quick tour and uh, show, you, show you the whole place. All the equipment and uh, give you a little tour of the firehouse and the equipment and what we do. So, uh, Brian, you want to say hello to everyone? How you guys doing? How are you? Happy Fire Prevention Week. So, we're going to start over here and um, uh, Brian, why don't you show us a, a smoke alarm? All right. So, uh, everyone should recognize this device and everyone should have it in their home. Um, smoke alarms give us uh, early detection of smoke when there's a fire in your house. Um, you want to activate it, Brian? So we all know when we hear that noise, it's time to get out of the house and everyone can assemble outside. And, um, you know, we should be practicing our fire prevention, um, our fire escape plans every uh, so often, periodically. And um, we also have to change the batteries regularly in the smoke detectors. Um, so uh, Brian is going to gear up in his fire gear and we're going to start showing you some of the uh, equipment. So why does a firefighter wear protective equipment in a fire? Because inside a fire it could be hot, it could be wet, it could be smoky. So we put on equipment to protect us. Brian's putting on his bunker gear now. And he just pops them on just like you pop your shoes on in the morning. And uh, he's going to continue by putting on his turnout coat. and his hat, his helmet, and uh, also his gloves and stuff. So when he's done, uh, we're going to have Brian uh, show us what it looks like. So even though a firefighter looks a little scary, um, we shouldn't be afraid of firefighters because firefighters are our friends. And they're there to help us. So anytime you see a firefighter, you know, say hello to him and reach out and you know, shake his hand and come visit the firehouse when we open it up again for visitors. We're here all the time. Now he's putting his mask on, which protects him. He can breathe clean air when he's in a fire because a fire produces smoky hot air that, you know, we really can't breathe. And the tank that's going on his back is full of air. We should be able to get about a half hour of breathing air on that when we're fighting a fire. And a nice, nice hard helmet on, protect his head in case something falls on him or 
also keeps the water off his neck. And the last thing he'll put on is his gloves to protect his hands. So that's it. That's basically the uh, whole setup of what the firefighter gear looks like. So uh, he could kind of take everything off now, and just to make it easier to show show everybody the rest of the gear, I'm going to give him a hand. So while Brian's getting undressed, um, I just want to talk about some fire prevention uh, tips and, 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 and safety uh, uh, procedures and things that we should adhere to in the house. I mentioned smoke alarms before. It's a good idea to test your smoke alarms periodically, change the batteries at least twice a year, and also uh, make sure you have a carbon monoxide detector inside your house. They should be positioned near bedrooms. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, specific equipment, but I do want to mention the fact that um, this coming week is Fire Prevention Week, and uh, the theme this year is uh, to prevent kitchen fires. And um, you can go to the uh, Coldwell Public Library website, and there's going to be a lot of links for you to get information and uh, real good info on uh, this year's uh, theme and um, fire prevention tips. So, uh, Brian, you want to show us some of this equipment? Right here, I got an axe and a halogen. We use this, these two tools to, uh, you know, break into doors pop doors with this end and this we could break through walls break doors anything else mark uh, you can open up a roof we open use, up uh, roofs we use uh, you know power tools um, but in the old days this is what we used and um, we can use this for uh, like Brian said when we get to a house a lot of times people aren't home and it's locked up so we can use this to get in uh, real quick all right called a thermal imaging camera or a tick. This can basically see through the smoke. I'll try and give you a quick image of that here. That'll show you the temperature, how hot fire is, how hot everything else in the room can is. Can you see me, Brian? Can you see? Pretty cool, right? All right, let's go to the next piece of equipment. So we also respond to not just fires, but all different kinds of emergencies like car accidents and sometimes um, you get in a little car accident and your door can be jammed and we have forcible entry uh, equipment that allows us to get into a, a door of a car or uh, you know cut a roof open or um, you know uh, so this is this is called the jaws of life and um, we use it uh, at, at car accidents but it could also um, be used it has a lot of different appliances that, that are connected with it could also be used at uh, you know, uh, building collapses and, and things like that. We use it um, to our advantage in uh, emergencies like that. All right. So um, that's that's just a, a quick review of uh, some of the tools that we have here in the firehouse. I think what we'll do next is uh, we'll walk you through the firehouse. Maybe we'll open up some of the compartments on the trucks and um, just give you a real quick peek at uh, the different uh, tools that are in the firehouse. I mean in the uh, uh, fire apparatus, and then we will take you on a, a walk through the firehouse so you get to see what the rest of the firehouse looks like. All right, so uh, maybe, maybe we'll just start with uh, the ladder truck right here. Uh, probably you want to just open the compartments and John can kind of like walk around. So here we have these big fans because you know, when mom and dad burn the toast, we gotta get the smoke out. So we bring these big fans in. This red thing over here, you might see this in your house, in your kitchen, or maybe in your school. Um, this is a fire extinguisher. So this can extinguish small fires. Um, only use a fire extinguisher if you know how to use it. Um, if you do have a fire in your house, who are you supposed to call? What's the number? 911. 911, remember that. But it's only for emergencies, all right? Uh, We'll keep on going. Um, we just have extra hose here, just like you'd have in your garden. Just, these are much bigger hose, put out bigger fires. All right, and then you can turn around. This is the engine over here. The engine holds all our water, 500 gallons of water in that engine. All right, and then we got seam lights, and then again, more fire extinguishers, extra 
air bottles for us to breathe in the smoke and more fans. And then, um, yeah, we'll go around the other side. We'll walk around the other side here, John. This is what the inside of the cab looks like. When we have you guys here next next year, we'll definitely be, be allowed to come back into the cab here. So each guy has their own pack, like we said. There's radios up there so we can communicate to each other. Each guy will have a radio inside the building. Let's walk around this way, John. Here's a hose that we can just grab right off the rig. Just walking back here. Extra hose. More full saws, break open roofs, doors, fences, locks, sledgehammers. And here we have additional rescue tools. Like I said, trying to open a car door, getting somebody trapped out of something. We have all that equipment here at the Paul Firehouse. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is a. Uh... Uh, we have three uh, fire apparatus here in Caldwell. You've seen two already. This is the third one. And this is actually the first one we go out with. And um, they all carry about the same equipment. This is just a shot of the pump panel. The driver operates the pump when we get to a fire, and the pump provides the uh, water to the, the, you know, the, the hoses for us to uh, put the fire out. Um, so that's it. That's, that's uh, our visit to the uh, firehouse in, in, in Caldwell. Um, Brian's going to finish up and um, say goodbye by just giving you a few uh, fire safety tips uh, that everyone should keep in mind. Yeah, so we learned a lot today, guys. Um, a quick summary is, you know, fire's bad, it's hot, it's dangerous. Um, some things to avoid fires. Please don't play with matches. Please don't get close to uh, mom or dad cooking. Um, please don't stick anything in electrical outlets. And um, also, we're just going to practice, you know, make sure you practice your fire safety drills at home. You do your fire safety drills at school, but make sure you practice them at home. Um, know what to do when the smoke alarm goes off. Um, we'll recap with, you know, if there is a fire, please call 911 and immediately leave the building or your house. And um, if we do happen to get into a fire, you know, heat rises, so we're going to want to stay low. We want to crawl out of the house as quickly as possible. And um, that's it. If you have any questions, please come visit us or give us a call here at the Coal Firehouse.